And now, the special presentation. Nick Marshall thought he was God's gift to women, but he's about to discover. That's fun. What women think. What did you say? Nothing. I can hear what women think. Rolex. Hey, there. Whoa, lighten up that aftershave, buddy. The notion of being able to read the minds of women is, I think, a kind of a, a male fantasy because it would answer a lot of questions that we simply don't have a lot of answers for. Why do I always feel like he's checking me out? There's things, there are thoughts in women's heads in this movie that I think men aren't aware of. Oh, God, I just looked at his crotch. <laughs> oh, I just looked at it again. <laughs> For guys to hear what women are thinking, I think it's going to be a very interesting experience. And I think women will probably smile in recognition. She thinks you're overpaid. Okay. What? I love the comedy in the movie. Good cut. But on top of that, the picture became more romantic than even I had thought it would be. Total shocker. He's like a nice guy. It's a great love story. I mean, it really is. It's really sweet. Don't fall for a guy at work. Don't fall for a guy at work. Why? Why what? I mean, the idea of this movie is timeless. I can't believe this is what I'll be wearing the last night. I'm a virgin. <gasps> what do you wear once? Let's just take it slow and see how it goes. So is your like it. It depends on any given moment. You free tonight? and Helen Hunt star in What Women Want from director Nancy Myers. That's a perfect! I think the thing that attracted me to this particular project is uh, it's a good, funny premise because, I mean, there's a, there is a barrier uh, between the sexes. If men are from Mars and women are from Venus and you speak Venusian, the world can be yours. I was drawn to the idea of a man who could hear inside a woman's head because it's obviously worth fine to them. Do you want to know all this about me? And to me, that's funny. You know, to me, uh, there was a lot of um, room there for comedy. That girl we met last night at the club, nothing happened after you put her in the cab, right? It did? Something happened? Well, she said she had to be in bed early. Well, I had her in bed by 11. Or was it a quarter to Yeah. Gibson plays a high-powered executive at a top Chicago ad agency. Well, he's the man on top. He doesn't even go to work till 10.30 in the morning, you know. He sleeps late and doesn't even carry a briefcase because he doesn't need to. He couldn't show up on time today. You know you're being promoted. Nick Marshall has made up all the ads for beer commercials using sexy women to sell products. You want babes in bikinis? He's your man. And suddenly it occurs to advertisers that women are making a lot of decisions about what's being bought. And my character in this movie gets that, and Mel Gibson's character is a little late in getting it. It's a woman's world out there. Getting into a woman's psyche is not exactly your strong suit. I play a woman who was uh, hired to be Mel Gibson's boss. So how do you turn that down? Um, he's sure that he's going to get a promotion to be the head of the agency. Hello, I'm Darcy. And much to his surprise and chagrin, a woman is hired to be his boss, and that's me. So, Nick, what'd you come up with? I don't suppose uh, anybody's interested in an idea involving the Swedish bikini team. I do know them all personally. Uh, <laughs> Gibson's ability to combine comedy and character, as well as his willingness to take risks, garnered the admiration of his co-stars. I think he's just, you know, he's smart. He's got a great sense of humor, and he's willing. You have to be willing to be silly and willing to go too far and... And also use your brain to keep it grounded in enough reality that people care while they're laughing, you know? And uh, he's great at all those things. <laughs> and he was fully aware that this was a real departure for him. And um, I was always like, you know, privately saying to myself, like, Mel Gibson's drinking a cup of coffee, you know, at his desk. It was so normal because he does extraordinary things in his movies normally. You know, even if he plays a cop, you know, he's a cop that jumps off the back of the truck into a car. We're so used to seeing him do superhuman things. So seeing him in these domestic situations was really interesting. I think he had a great time doing something different. He just comes to the set with himself and his mind, which is like a whip, and he puts it all in his head. And what happens is he's improvising, coming up with ideas right there in the moment. And that's very fun to work with. Here you go, Nick. In addition to his new boss, the other women in Nick's life include Marissa Tomei as the coffee shop girl he'd like to date, Lauren Holly as his ex-wife, and Ashley Johnson as his 15-year-old daughter. I used to go stay with him because my mother just got remarried. You can take care of your old man for a change. Cook for me and get me my slippers. Yeah, that'll be happening. She's very rebellious, and it's she's very embarrassed too. I mean, everybody, all the teens are really embarrassed by what their parents do. 
That's mine. Where, where are you? In order for Nick to better understand the minds of women, his boss has given him a special box of products, which he opens one night while home alone. You go, girl. I'm a bitch, I'm a liar, I'm a child, I'm a wonder, I'm a oh, you don't get products like control top pantyhose, mascara, lipstick, uh, pregnancy test kits without actually trying them, you know, to see, you know, what it's like. So he tries them. The funny thing is, he looks great in pantyhose. That's the thing, was the big surprise. I won't say what size he wore, but, and he literally could not put them on without practically putting his foot through them every time. And then he did actually wax his legs because I, I thought he needed to know what it really was. And we have the right leg and it's very hot to wax. It's very, very hot. That's the first time I waxed my leg. It, it, was, it doesn't hurt. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, oh. Okay, it's the man. Well, you know, hey, it's pretty easy, actually. A little wax on the lower uh, uh, leg with a uh, some kind of like a cloth pad. Stick it on there, let it sit for a little while. It's kind of nice. Yeah. I don't know why women complain about waxing their legs. The script says it hurts, so you better make it look painful. Oh. 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 The women, it, hurt, it hurts, you know? And But he's Mel Gibson, you know? It was like, yeah, what's the big deal? He didn't think it was such a big deal. Why would anyone ever do that more than once? Why would anyone ever cut the other leg? But apparently, like, that was the least painful place to do it. So they tell me, I'm saying, what are you complaining about? This doesn't hurt. And they said, well, you should try doing your bikini line. Like, I'm going to try that, you know. <laughs> Stan! Hi! What are you doing? Exfoliating. It's so funny. We come home, and he's in pantyhose, and he has on lipstick and mascara. Hi, Snail. Oh, shit, there. It's like, oh, my God, this is the worst thing that could ever happen to me. Especially in front of my boyfriend. Good night. While trying to explain the situation to his daughter, Nick experiences a mishap that changes his life. He ends up slipping on some bath beads and knocking his head on the bathtub, then he's electrocuted. And when he wakes up the next day, he has a very strange thing happening to him. He's hearing what women think. Morning, Mr. Moss. It happens with the woman who works in his building. He's the door woman. Thank you, Flo. You're welcome, my little sweet bun. What did you say? Link? Nothing. And he decides to walk to work. And every woman that he passes in the park, he can hear every thought. And uh, he thinks he's having some kind of nervous breakdown or going crazy. So it sort of makes him a little more than concerned. <laughs> that he thinks, you know, fall over him and adore him, actually don't like him at all. What a schmuck. Which is kind of a shocker to him because he never suspected or expected to hear some of the things that he then does. Do you realize that I have an Ivy League education and that running your stupid errands has put me into therapy? <laughs> Director Myers, who co-wrote Private Benjamin, Baby Boom, and The Father of the Bride films, and directed The Parent Trap, brought her unique sensibility to this film. Okay, that's good one to have. Nancy, she brings a wit, and she has a knowledge about what's funny. She has a particular way of looking at the world and the people in it that is unique. Doesn't have to knock it, he can just turn it in like, oh. <laughs> Nancy's absolutely, you know, in love with Tracy Hepburn movies, and so I think she's going for a classic feel, you know, um, which just basically, I think, means smart relationships between people and a good funny bone, too, and she has all that. We're all a little closer now. <laughs> Here's what I think. She's done a lot of successful movies. She has the Midas touch, and she tells great stories. She brings to it the expertise of knowing what she wants. She knows instinctively when something's funny, when a shot looks right. But you think yeah, she's the bigger reaction to her. Her bent is comedy. I mean, she uh, she goes for the incongruous thing, the yet truthful, you know, the truthful things about what women might be thinking. You know, it ranges all over the place. You know, within one minute, you'll hear thoughts diametrically opposed to one another on just about anything. This feels like a date. He needs to go. Well, I'm out of here. I think the fun of the movie is that men and women are sort of <laughs> clueless about what women want exactly. It's too uh, complex to put into words. Oh, why did I tell to stop asking me out? I'm an idiot, idiot, idiot. Hey, Nick, how's it going? Lola. 